for the international audience uh, just to uh, a very quick intro myself and shantaya the two liaison officers for psa myself and fiap shanta Gunratha, uh, are the ones who will be moderating between the two languages uh, Sanka Sammana, who is also on board, who is part of the board of uh, directors of the National Photographic Art Society, uh, will, uh, whose brainchild this is, you know, who, whose thought leadership that, this is, that led me to support him and then engage with him, bringing in uh, international speakers, international presenters of repute uh, on different tags. So this is the second one that we are doing. I would like to warmly welcome every one of you and then Sanka, you can do an intro uh, to the local audience, please, if you don't mind, please. Subha Sandhya of Sivudhi Nathama. Sri Lanka Jatika Chaya Rupakala Sangha Venuveng Am Feminist Sivudhi Nathama Sadhirin Pidhika Anno. Api Mek Jatika Antra Vedasra Hanak Kheri Rathamai Api Pavartta Gani Anni. Ugoda Api Hama Maasekama Meemagi Jatika Antra Kala Karu Vek Genalla Photographer Gani Ega Aadis Kini Ega Photo Aadis Kini Ega Genalla Danu Vedadi Me Adasak itu, na, I think api yesere, api ikut yesere tapi tik ikut ikut tu ni ibu tu jati ke, Dr Ahmad Mohammad Hasan, street photography dia, na, I think me me tu ma me yesere, Mr Ayman Lotfi Mahata api tik ikut tu na me session ni kat sana, na, conceptual photography, modern art photography dia, na, I think siapa dia na, ada Mohammad Suri Mohammad dia kat sana, na, balap orang tu yang ni na, he. Api istirahat kerana versi rahang orang datang ni bagaimana sahabat yang kita lagi makaran kita mesti memilih ayam. Eh, kemana api post api kerana versi rahang saya akan lah. Hari kita ada dengan makaran lagi ramang sesiun lagi makaran awak. Eh, kemana kita mesti api sangat memetik ketuaan ni kira lah api versi rahang ni. Eh, kita mahu bagi peti ilmu. Eh, mungkin tanya mama apa yang kita kata kerana. Uh, before I hand it to, over to Vikum, uh, I would like to thank Mr. Ayman Lakshmi for uh, accepting our invitation. Then uh, we look uh, forward to an interesting session together with your creative works. And uh, also uh, concept and method you used to create those images. Then uh, uh, once again, I would like to thank Mr. Ayman and uh, all of you in uh, audience for joining us today. Uh, over to you, Vikum. You can uh, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yes. A very warm welcome on behalf of the National Photographic Art Society of Sri Lanka. And this is our second in the series uh, of uh, presentations by international photographers and photographic artists of repute, uh, discussing different uh, genres of uh, in photography. So the first one we had was on street. Not that we have done with street. We'll have more and more different viewpoints, different, uh, you know, uh, concepts, different uh, uh, thought processes that will come through. So we'll have different speakers in the future. But that's where we started off. We thought we'll, you know, start from street, then we'll get into uh, either contemporary uh, art creations or modern art creations. So coincidentally, uh, today what we are going to do is uh, talk about the modern uh, art in photography. And we have Mr. Ayman Lotfi. Uh, he's a PSA member as well as uh, he's part of my translations team for the Arabic uh, journal of PSA uh, sitting out of Egypt. Uh, a very warm welcome, Ayman, and thank you very much for accepting the invitation. Uh, please feel free to, as we discussed yesterday, uh, instead of going ground up or zero up of, uh, you know, capturing a moment or an image, uh, you would want to talk through the images that you have created or captured uh, coming from the outside view. So how or what inspired you to? That's exactly what we are talk going to talk about, you know, what's the inspiration behind all your creative work that you have done? Uh, what do you have? Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Vikram, and uh, to all the team of uh, Sri Lanka Photographic Society for giving me the uh, opportunity to present my art and my photography through your uh, Zoom meeting. You know, Sri Lanka is uh, the wonderful place uh, which everyone 
uh, like to go actually you have uh, a great history and a great civilization more than 3000 years so it is my pleasure to be here with you and also with international photographer from the the whole over the world i would like to start my presentation also i would like to thank all my friends in sri lanka the most kind friends that i ever met in my whole traveling uh, around the world uh, and i wish we can communicate very easy because we are talking the same language it's, it's the sangu- the language of photography so now i will start my presentation so we are living in the world of photography not uh, only us but all the people are doing the mission of photography everybody in the world is photographer everybody have uh, his mobile phone his ipad his camera everybody is getting uh, making photography and shooting every day so all the people around the world are photographers so we are very poor because we are doing the mission that everybody in the world is do it everybody in the world is a photographer and i made this in 2019 i calculate how many photos uploaded and shared per day until 2019 we found like uh, uploaded every day and the last i did it, it was like 57 and 246 photo taken per second i mean like 5 billion photos per day uh, and we have asked ourselves a question how we can call ourselves a professional photographer with this all amount of photos how we can be different how we can do something new and every day in the world we found like 5 billion photo per day are sharing i believe that photography is not an easy job but i believe it could be but for the talented people we are the photographer we are different than everybody else even the painters because we have a rules that always we make it in our photo we have the golden spirit we have our rules of photography that we don't have to break it or if we try to break it we have to break it by the rules for myself i grew up with the pharaohs and old egyptian civilizations that all if we see all the art that uh, in egypt was the pharaohs uh, and all egyptian it will be uh, continuous with the rules of the photography that we know the third and two third the guiding line and everything here is what we can call when we put the dimension and the rules over any photo the golden spirit and the third and two third so we always see the world in a different way let's see the world of the photography and i believe that we have to learn to walk before we run so let's have a work now here is the normal photos that everybody see it like it's young girl just looking but for the professional photographer and the, the judging we saw it like this you see the arrow this is to the direction for the positive space in the photo and we have the third and two third and we have the angle between the eyes and the hands and this point is like how to stop the eye of the viewer you didn't want it go out of your frame so you are doing framing without frame with your composition the composition is very important this is the normal photos for the people 
but for the artist and photographer, we can see it in another way with the guys line that we saw. Let's talk about the portrait composition because the portrait is my favorite. Actually, in the camera, we see in the viewfinder the line for the third and two third. There is a rule for the head of the portrait. There is a position in the frame. Here is the direction of the head, and here is the eyes. And always we have to save the eyes in the portrait. It has to be up until the, uh, the first third in the viewfinder. And here is the direction of the hands, because we did, don't have to cut the hands on any portrait. And if we put our portrait in this composition and rules, we find it's related to the rules that I learned or, or we follow in our photography. And always the lighting here, I used Rembrandt style lighting with one direction lighting. Also, we guide the viewer how to look to our photos, which point you will go first and next and third. So let's see here, we have like one, two, three, and four. This is the maximum look. If you look to this photo, you find the most lighter area in the portrait, it is in the left eye. And this is how the people catch the portrait and look to the portrait. The first thing he has to look, look to the eye. So you will find the eye is the most lighter area in the portrait. And after it, the second eye. And if you look to the hand, the head must be darker than the face. You don't have to make the light of the hand shiny more than the face because the, the visual attraction point will go to the hand and this is wrong. It has to go directly to the eyes. And finally, I made the framing with this red scarf. So now you can see, I guide the viewer which point he has to look to my portrait. And this is some portrait of mine. And always sometimes you use simplicity in the composition. Simplicity uh, in, in portrait, uh, this is like example, it's maybe like abstract, it's maybe like simplicity, we can call it just like body art. Let's talk about how I started my way to the great world of photography. In 1998, I started as a normal photographer, I was shooting street photography and sports photography because I'm working like art director. So I start to use my photos to make my own designs and car racing and sports events. And also I shoot products and jewelry and I have many covers, magazines. This is, was my start as a photographer. Also, when I'm traveling abroad, I was shooting like everyone in photo travel. I'm shooting uh, normal street photography, always trying to do something new, maybe using different style. Yeah. 
excuse me aman if you may uh, slow down the uh, transitions of photographs uh, so that people okay. in the audience may actually uh, take some time maybe 10 seconds for each photograph so that they can actually uh, grasp and relate to what you are trying to uh, portray here so that they can also uh, get an understanding of your uh, you know captures thank you okay this is my travel photography this is china this is cairo actually this world was all buried uh, for buried for all cars in downtown in cairo so this is was it 2005 so it looks like uh in the beginning of 18s but this is was a buried for all cars here is also i'm trying to use a different angle when i'm shooting all the times i'm trying to do something different something new this is a collection so what i need to say is that i started my way in photography as a normal i was shooting uh, photo travel men at work people at work uh, but i never shoot the jungle by the way or i wish to shoot jungle one day uh, this is the normal uh, photos that I, i i started to shoot always you have to ask myself yourself who you are in the world of photography do you have a style i mean if you are a beginning a beginner or an amateur photographer you have to shoot everything but when you grow up you have to to have your own style you have uh, you don't have to shoot anything uh, or, and or everything anymore so you have to have your own style now i will tell you how to get your own style it is very easy just trust your feeling look what you are interested in what you feeling relax when you are shooting it is like your fingerprint so everybody is different than the others here is something called this is the, i call it the boss card stand the disappointed stand for the foreign photographer when i go to any uh, foreign country for a trip i go directly to the gift shop to look to the postcard to this country or to this town when i look to the postcards and i found everything it's already uh, they shot it before I, or they have a photographs it's have a photographs before so when i'm go to this country i'm trying to shoot something different than that i saw in the postcard stand so I, why i shoot something is already done and shot it before and print it as a postcard now we have example here in 2014 i invited uh, to in, uh, indonesia uh in a group photography trip and we were around 40 photographers and uh, we have uh, bondo from sri lanka here with us I, i am in the left and bondo is next to me he is one of the greatest friend i ever met so all this kind of photographer are different every we have here photojournalism jungle photographer sports photographer and the portrait photographer all kind of photographers are here so i thought how to be a different with all this kind of photographers let's back again this was a, a very uh, a hard uh, mission for me to look a different between all these photographers so 
I decided to have or to create my own way in photography style. Here is all of us is going to the same places and you can see all the photographer are shooting the same thing. And here is all of us in the same boat. So I decided when I finished my shooting to create my own color scene to look different. We can see down, it is the original photo. And here is a light room. I create my own color scene. I didn't take already filter, ready filters that exist in Lightroom, but I, I create a special one. Uh, that color is related to Indonesia, uh, is related to the culture and the atmosphere of the people that I shoot there. So I used this theme of color to look different. We can see this photo, it looks more green. And this one too. Here is the photo after the filter. This is very famous shot in Indonesia, the cow racing. And even the landscape, I shoot it by the same way and make artistic group. When I present my photos, because they asked us, each photographer to present 15 photos. So I tried to do a special style that related to my feeling, to myself. So. I use this kind of color, this theme of color. So if you see all these photos together, you can uh, imagine and feel this is the same photographer who took it all. And always I'm trying to be different. This is my way when I'm shooting flower. Everybody's shooting flower, but when I'm shooting flower, I shoot it like this because I'm always trying to be a different and I didn't want to shoot something is shot before. Here is a pike. Everybody shoot it like this. But when I present it, I can convert it into some artistic scene. Also, I'm caring about the quality of the photo. The quality and sharpness is very important because you didn't lose the depth of each photo you have. The depth is very important and the depth, because we're buying an expensive camera and expensive lenses, so we have to use this quality. You can see here is the images, how much is sharpness. Let's go to inspiration. How we get our inspiration actually? Actually in the left, we can see the normal people in the world or, or our society. And in the right is the artist or the photographer. We always get the reflection, what's the normal people or what's happening in our society, what's happening in our country, what's happening in our area, or what's happening in the whole world. And take it to our mind and the converter converted it to visual art. That's how we get our inspiration. What happening in the world around us that converted in, in our feeling. So we take what's happening in our world and send it as an artistic visual. What I mean is we are not a photojournalism or I am not a photojournalism. The photojournalism is reflecting the truth as it is if he want to take about crowded, so he will shoot the crowded. If he want to talk about war, so he will shoot the war itself and publish it. 
But the artist is different. So he has to convert what's happening around him into artistic visual unit or uh, artistic visual photos. So that's what happening where we get our inspiration. We get our inspiration what's happening around us in the world. Here this is from my point of view. Success in art is only when you train yourself to be able to express what you feel inside regarding a scene and convert it to a piece of art. Regardless, it is a painting or a photo or even just a line on a white paper. Just make sure you have reached your extreme ability of expression, which is for me the pinnacle of success. What I mean here, it is very simply, if you have your uh, train yourself, you have a strong technique, you know the rules of photography, you know how to take photo with a perfect way, or you have your own tools, then what you can feel, you can express about it, you can do it, what's going in, deep inside of you, you can do it if you have a tools in your hand. That's why we always ask the, the young people and the student of art, learn well, when you are uh, young and follow the rules and then you can break the rule. But you have to teach yourself in the beginning very well because someday because sometimes and someday you will need your experience to exp express about yourself. Since 2005, I have a mission. I was a normal photographer, but in 2005, I have a mission. I need, when I exhibit my work into a national or international exhibition, they put my photography next to the art because always they put the photography in a separate way. But I, I wished that I put my photography next to painting in the exhibition. And also I need to express about myself. I don't need to document anymore because everything is shot before and I did normal shooting, I did documentary, but I have a feeling and I have emotions. I need to express about it with photos. I made this shot in 2005. This is my first experimental shot. Uh, in this time, everybody was telling you, don't use Photoshop, don't use digital camera, use the film, don't use technology. But actually I didn't listen to anyone because I need to do something different. I need to add my feeling to photo. This is what's called all in one. And this is, was all my friends, my office in my company. And we said like, we made like one photo, like all in one. So actually this person has become uh, very regular to me. Uh, uh, this continuous, uh, contain more than six or seven people. But finally, when I see it, I feel, I feel like it is one person. In 2006, this was my first experimental exhibition, solo exhibition. This was called The Other Side of Faces. I made it in 2006. From this time, I start to do a conceptual photography. And this is, was my first poem. It was called The Other Side of Faces. And the most important the concept of this project it was have the concept that we can decorate our faces and our body, but we cannot decorate our soul. I mean, uh, in this concept that you don't uh, judge the people how they look from outside, judge the people how they look from inside. And this is 
was the exhibition. I made it, it was body art and photography. Please mention the years, the years how I started this project. It was 2006. Aman, excuse me. Uh, Aman, on behalf of the entire audience, if you may slow down these images for up to 15 seconds. And if you wish to uh, elaborate on any particular image, please do so because we would also like to, I'm sure, uh, especially some of the students who are out here and, and uh, you know, uh, of some photography would want to understand the thought process and, and what, what really uh, is what you are trying to showcase in uh, through each of these images. Maybe the okay. messaging, maybe the, I, I know you already given a, a 35,000 feet view of or, or, or what, what, your, what your intentions are on this, but each image, I, based on what you just showcased, the four of them, uh, has has different meanings, I'm sure. So maybe you would want to uh, talk through some of those images, not all of them, but maybe some of them, uh, so that people also understand what you're trying to portray. Okay. Now, let's again say, in this concept, this is what's the concept of the whole exhibition. It, we, you ha we have one concept, and I have about 14 photo it's just body art and photography. Uh, the whole exhibition has the same concept. Now, when you are doing an exhibition, you have a solo exhibition. I mean, not group exhibition. When you are doing a solo exhibition, you have to write a concept of the exhibition. And we we'll see this later in my next exhibitions. So I have the concept and I have 14 images it is all talking about this concept, okay? You got me, Fekam? Yes, yes. Um, okay. They're so, not just for myself, but for the for the entire audience, so that you okay. explain. Yeah. Okay. So for this exhibition, this is was the concept that we can decorate our faces and bodies, but we can decorate our soul. This is all talking about this. We have many emotions. We have different feeling. We have different kind of portrait. Each one have the same or different feeling, but we can't judge how it looks like from outside, but we have to judge how it looks like from outside. Here is this one. It looks very cute, very kind. And this one looks very wild, but we can't judge how it looks from outside. We have to understand how it looks from inside. Here is this portrait. If we look to the shadow, we will find it's like a fox. It's like a fox, the shadows. Uh, of the head, it looked like a fox. It's a normal human, but his shadow it looks like a fox. This of full of black and crying, and uh, it seems like very kind eye here. And also I'm trying to use the cropping. The cropping in photography is, uh, looks so artistic. You can see it, uh, that I focus to the hands here and the lips and the, the face, not the whole face. So this cropping is uh, like trying to do some artistic cropping. Uh, actually this exhibition uh, is make me contact 
with the fine artists or plastic art home doing paintings, the painter in my country, and the people who are doing his sculpture, the artists who are doing his sculpture and the painters. When he saw this kind of photography with a painting, we mix it, the art together. I mean, the artist, the fine artist, you know, the photographer everywhere in the world is have their own society, their own uh, circle. But I, I try to transfer the photography to the uh, painters and the artists. To, that's why I'm doing this kind of exhibition. The, 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 the perfect end after this project in 2006, the government and the culture uh, of the Ministry of Culture uh, asked me to do like 14 portrait, uh, size 120 by 180. Uh, it will be displayed in Cairo International Airport. And this was a very important project. I got it from Ministry of Culture to put my work and the photography to put it in the Cairo International Airport. This was a very important project for me. And this is got to me after I presented my photographs. So here is uh, the project was the nation of the whole world by my photography style. Uh, here example, this is a flat shot. This is uh, uh, talking about Indian people, Indian nations. And here was the artistic lighting. I mean, the lighting is very important when you make uh, your art project. You have to use artistic lighting as well. In the left, you find this is very nice portrait, but very flat but you can convert it into art when using, uh, when you paint with your light. This is was the Morocco, presented Morocco area, like Morocco and Tunis. This was the South Africa area. This was uh, Greece. And this is the North Africa. And here is the work when it displayed in the airport. Actually, I was very happy because this is the first time that the government asked to put photography in international place like uh, the Cairo airport. And this is one of the most projects that I proud, uh, uh, proud it. Every time I go and travel, I was sitting under the photos and take a, a shot. It is was 14 portrait. And also in 2009, I got the, the cover of PSA, PSA journal. This was the first cover I got it in BSA. And also I have an article about the body art. Actually, I was proud of this project. And also thank to BSA for presenting me to the whole world with this uh, article and cover. You know, I'm also trying to uh, catch the, 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 the attention of the painter. So I made this photo. This is the, the famous uh, painting of uh, Freemar, the painter, the international Freemar painting. It's called the girl with the earring, uh, pearl earring ring. This is very famous painting. So I converted it into a photo. Here is another project in Alexandra Library. They asked me to do mermaid, and this was uh, 150 by 280. It's like a huge photography image. 
So I made this photo as well. And here is in the Alexandra Library in the entrance. So now when I converted my photography into the artistic and the conceptual, I start to get uh, an offer from, from the culture, from the faculty of, uh, sorry, from the Ministry of Culture to do my work in important places. I mean, uh, you may also want to, when you are presenting your images, want to talk through some of your techniques and uh, specific, what shall I say, compositional thought processes that have gone uh, okay. into, your, into the making of that image, which might help actually, uh, you know, uh, for the audience to understand. That might actually help you, help the audience to also uh, relate to the images from a uh, you know compositional standpoint as well. Uh, thanks. Okay. In 2011, I will give you an example how I made these photos. By the way, okay. But this one is very important. Actually, in 2011, the Egyptian government asked me to do a, a big panorama in uh, African Union building in Ethiopia. So, you know, the art is very, uh, very have a very uh, close relation with the politics. So when I get this chance to put my work in Ethiopia, in uh, Addis Ababa, in uh, African area, uh, you know, we have uh, now in this time, we have the problem of uh, the Ethiopian dam between because we take care about the, the dam and the Nile. But in 2011, when I made this kind of art, I put like African figure in the left and Egyptian figure in, in uh, sorry, African figure in the right and Egyptian figure in the left. And you can see the river Nile is uh makes it between them and in the middle the african map uh so this work is uh, uh i put it in african union we can see i will tell you how i did this work you uh, we can see the work here in African Union. This is two images, and this is a building, and this is dedication from Egypt, two big panorama in the VIP entrance. Now let's have a talk about what kind of photography we always hear in around of us. We have something called computer graphic and digital art, okay? This is not related to our work as experimental photography. We didn't have to call our photographers, our photographs or our artwork as computer graphic or digital art. We can call it experimental photography or conceptual photography. We have serialism photography and we have performance photography, abstract photography, light painting photography, and also we have CGI and the normal snapshots is that the direct photography, we call it portrait and landscape and street journalism and whatever, all kinds of photography. But the conceptual photography and experimental, we have to put the name of photography. We didn't have to call our work like computer graphic or digital art. Yes, we call it experimental photography. And we have lately the monitor that AI, I will try to talk about it uh, uh, later, but we know all artificial intelligence that became in lately. So, but let's talk before why we're using experimental or conceptual photography. And everybody tell you don't use Photoshop, don't use graphic, but uh, I can tell you in the cinema industry, if they didn't use graphics or Adobe Premiere or After Effects is a, 
the graphic software for the cinema, you can't see Avatar, you can't see Spider-Man, you can't see all the movies, and it will cost a, a huge amount of money if you don't understand the technology. So I ask the old, the old artists and the young artists, please study technology to save the time, to make your vision very wide, because we can see up, this is a photo of uh, Avatar without CGI, and down uh, the photo with CGI. Uh, CGI is computer generating imaging. And the computer can make uh, a generating imaging, but it can't make feeling, it can make emotion of the human being. So the director here, we find him, he records the emotion of a human being and then convert it into graphic as we see. That we are trying to say it all the time because the technology have no feeling, have no emotion, but we can put our emotion. This was my first project in 2008 also. And in 2008, this was my first experimental project that displayed in Cairo Opera House in 2008. And this project was talking about woman life. Now, uh, Vikram, how are we creating a project? Now this is the, the slides that you're asking for. When you are using computer graphic in photography or using Photoshop in your photography or trying to do a, a experimental project, you always to remember who is the rider the artist or the technology, who guiding, who, who guiding the computer. If you make the computer guiding you, you will convert your work like we said, it's like computer graphic, that we calling computer graphic. But when you ride the computer and control the technology, this is what we call experimental and conceptual photography. You got this, Vikram, it's okay. Yes, yes, very much. Okay. So I believe that this, the audience will have questions on this. Let's see. Not now, not now, okay. at the end of the day. Okay. So who is the writer? Who is the controller? The photographer or the computer? Now from my work, I am the controller. I starting my project, Vikram, as a sketch. Now we said before, how we get our inspiration. We get our inspiration from what happening around us in our society, in our friends, in our country, in our uh, the whole world. So I start every project by sketch. I do like sketch. When I got idea, I got to do a sketch uh, before I sketch it. So here I try to do an angel with a black wings. So I did this sketch and then I used my camera and also I have my photography tools and this is we call photographer tools. All these softwares and the camera, this is the photography tools now. And also here is in my computer after shooting and here is a sketch that I have and here is the final photo. So the sketch is very important. You have to sketch the idea, the inspiration you have, and then convert it into a photographs. Okay, this is the normal model, by the way, in the middle I shoot it. And this is, and uh, I put this uh, wing, it's, this was uh, small wing, it's not big like this actually. And then I shoot it and, put it in behind the model. Here is the wave, I use it by graphic as well. And here is the model. So we have here three shots from the same idea. Everyone have its own 
expression at its own feeling. You can see this one. And this one, little while, and you see the wing is how it looks like. And this is different expressions. I made the shot also when I'm talking about the people, it was 2009, and I was talking about the people that hiding behind the screen, and we all talking with us behind the keyboard. So this was the concept. We can't see each other, but we talking behind the keyboard with the keyboard. This is, was before the Facebook, I think. And this is the final image. And this is how I did it. You see, I make a production for the mask. This is a ma the mask I put it from Venice. And then I take a keyboard, a normal keyboard from the computer keyboard. Okay. I take it and I put it on over the mask. And then I shoot the photos like this with a chroma background. And then I shoot the keyboard of my computer and convert it like this. Let's see here this, this photos before the, the AI. So you can see in the right how many layers I have, how I paint, how I make the shadows, the touches of the shadows. You can see I paint with the Wacom. I paint with my, my hand actually to, uh, to do the lighting. And this is the original photo. And here's we get the final. By the way, this is before the AI. You can see now how many layers. It's not an easy job, by the way, but I'm controlling. It's like I'm using uh, the computer like 40% only, but I'm doing everything by my hand, like I paint over the computer. And this was actually very early 2009. And there is another inspiration, how I got my inspiration. We found young people are playing cards all the time in the cafe. They waste their time. And also trying to say, we need a job. We need the money. But in another hand, you find them are playing cards all the time. So I made this sketch, okay? This is the sketch in the beginning. I paint what I need to express. How I convert the people are playing cards into an artistic vision. So here is my sketch. And then I start to shoot like this. Uh, a young man is sitting on a red chair. You can see here is my equipment and here is the location of my photography. And you see here is a stand. I put this stand because I planning to put something over the stand that's next to the young boy. Okay, here's the final photo that I choose it. And this is the fan because he's sitting behind the fan and dreaming that the fan will make him go and fly. Here is the, the other side of the shot. Let's see, look to this shot, okay. This uh, wall, it's, uh, I, I print it. It's a picture I printed in my printer and make it like three sides of the wall like this. If you need to know where the photographer, this is my leg and I took the photo from up. You can see it's like a box. It's you box, I mean, it's not uh, completely box. I left one side because I know that I will put the final size by computer. And here is the final image. Another young man in a hole and he wished someone pick him up or take him up. Here is the sketch. And here is the final. And I present this in general exhibition in Egypt. It's uh, uh, 2012. You can see how I finalized the image. Here is another image. I made this accessories and we can see how many layers we have here. 
I shoot this one, and then I make uh, like uh, a repetition of it to be like a background. And this is the mask. This is the the main shot. I shoot this. This is what I did after the sketch. Okay. This is a mask, and I put this uh, scrolls. And this is the final image. You see, this one is the final. Let's see again how it continues. Okay. I shoot this separate. And I made this background from that shot. And this is the model with the mask I shot it. And then here is the final image. Before the final, I mean, and this is, I convert it into black and white and make the eyes just green. Here is another sketch. And have this is a conceptual photography, experimental conceptual photography. There's a woman through the sea and using fork. Actually, here is the final. I mean, how I did this, it's like the other images, the model separate and the boat is really separate too. And the two forks is separate. And then the sea, I shot it from uh, Egypt and the sky as well. And actually this is have a concept, this photo. The woman is trying to move the boat with a fork. That means she will go nowhere. She will stand like she will never move. So this is the concept. Uh, how I got the idea, actually I was talking to someone because he do nothing in his life that I tell him, you're trying to move the boat with a fork. I just said this, uh, uh, what, what I said, it's just said in a normal talking. So I convert this photo, uh, this uh, thinking, I mean, this inspiration into a sketch. And then I made this photo. This is means she will go nowhere. And actually, there is another steps. I print my work by myself. I have my own printer, and always I sit. I so I print my work because the printing is very important. Let's talk about printing in a different lecture uh, because the printing is it is a kind of art as well, like a photo, uh, a photograph. I mean, if you take a photo, it's kind of art, and the printing is another kind of art and very important to understand how to print your photos, how, which kind of paper you will use, glossy or matte, and uh, how you will finalize your work. So I print my work by myself. And after a printing, here is before I print the big sizes because all my work is around 120 by 120 or 110 by 110. Uh, it is all square. I print this contact sheet like a sample before print the, the, the big sizes. And I start to look to each image to find if I have something wrong because in the monitor, you always something you can catch it. But when you print, you can see the original photo. So I do this and put my remarks here under each photo. And then here's one of my exhibition. And let me tell you something. When you understand the rules of photography, when you hang your photo or uh, in, in the exhibition, we always use the photography, the direction of photography, the direction of the composition as well when you display your photo. So it is not an easy job. And like you see here, we have some black wall and some white wall. Okay. So I, before I hang my photo, I, I my photos, I make like a plan, and actually it is a huge work. But for photographers, I mean, because we know the rules of photography is very easy for us. Here is one of my exhibition. This was in two thousand and fourteen. In two thousand and ten, I uh, it was uh, a converting in my life actually. 
because I invited to very important exhibition in Cairo Opera House. It was an installation and video art, and uh, it was not for photography exhibition, it's for modern art. So when they invited me to this exhibition, uh, let me tell the new generation something. When you have a uh, solo exhibition, you can talk about something special or related to yourself. I mean, when you have a national exhibition, you can talk about something special to yourself, to your society, to your country. But if you have international exhibition, so you have to, to talk about something global. It's related to the whole world. Everybody can understand it. So in 2010, this was a very important uh, exhibition for the artists. It was called Why Not Exhibition? And actually, I didn't act like photographer only in this exhibition. I made a video art. A video art is like video, short video, like six minutes. And I made uh, an installation, installation, live installation, and photography as well. Let's see how I did in this project. It's called the game. Actually, in this project, I was talking about the war, the wars that happening in the world from uh, all the history of us, actually, of the human being, the wars. So I made this project, and the concept was if we don't, uh, the one have defined uh, on his land and family. We don't have to make a war to get oil or to get gold from the other country. So the people now or the countries now is going to war not to defend about their lands or family. They make wars to take the treasures of the others. So uh, we can see everybody talk about democracy and the world is talking about the democracy and the freedom and uh, they talk about uh, uh, animal uh, uh, animals, how they can take about animals actually and you find many societies talk about how they are caring uh, of animals and uh, talking about the freedom of the people and the democracy. Where is democracy when you make a war or drive young people to the war and they didn't relate it to, to, to themselves because uh, I, they didn't belong themselves to go to the war. It doesn't, I, I don't have to go a war to get gold for uh, the, the other people. I mean, we don't have to make war for oil or for gold. To, to steal gold from the others. And I can see, did you ever imagine yourself one day if you were forced to join in the first row of an army battle only to de defend or to attack some personal reason that you don't uh, by any means related you to yourself? Yeah, so it is the... I, uh, why I'm going to war that doesn't relate it to my land or to my family. So this is what's the concept of this project. This was very an uh, international project. And here is, we can find the photos here in the left. You can find this is uh, an iron uh, helmet for a soldier and it's going into uh, a mid gender. And then uh, you can find it's uh, go out like a meat but many people ask me why you make the meat looks green here uh, i mean why i mentioned the meat of the soldiers here uh, is become green not red I, it was my concept actually i made it green because all the people who are dying in the wars are young people our 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 kids that they're uh, they're from 18 to 22 years old. To, can you imagine how you force your kids into a war? So that's why I mentioned to their blood with a green. Here's how I started the project. I shoot this person. Okay. 
This is the first shot I shot it. I have sketched everything. And here is the chest. Uh, as you see, the two kings are alive and standing. And all the soldiers around them is falling down. And always every war, the king is still alive. And uh, we find the soldier die. And nobody mentions them. We all we always remember the people who did or who started the fire. But we never remember the name of the soldiers or the history never mentions them. Here is the final photo. We can see. It is like the game. Even the war from my, my vision is like a game. Actually, it is, uh, it is like a, ch a chess game. And here is another photo, the other one. This is the horn. This is the war horn that we, we used it before. And here is also my computer. I merge all this photo. This is 2010, by the way, this is very big project I made. And here is the final image, second image. We can see the war horn is uh, 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 put the blood and we can see the solid and the chest poured down. You see how they looks like, they know they are going in the first row to die. So this is what the image, this is was conceptual and experimental. And this is the meat gender. And this is how uh, when I'm shooting my VR, I put two players with the masks who was playing with a green solidus. You know that chess is only has the solidus. And here is a shot from the movie. One time we can talk about video art and uh, play the videos, but uh, because uh, I mean, let's talk about photos and conceptual now. And here is our shooting my video. I'm, 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 uh, when I'm doing video art, by the way, I'm, I'm not shooting by myself. I'm working as a director because uh, if I hold the camera and just start shoot with the camera, I will not focus to my storyboard or my sketches in the movie. So I work as a director. And you see all of us here, look, this is like the viewfinder of the camera. This small monitor is like the same like viewfinder of the camera that we look when we take a photo. This is my way to doing video because I know the rules of photography very well. When I'm shooting a video, uh, uh, I, I use the rules of photography that I learned it, uh, and make it in the same way by my, in my video. Also, the lighting, I use the same lighting in my photographs. And we can see this is a huge uh, mid-gender. I made it uh, uh, in a store. I mean, it was iron, and I made it with iron, and uh, uh, painted after this with red color. And here's with the final thing I'm doing the video art. Here's we are talking about directing. And here's look, all of us looking to the monitor. We didn't look to the camera, we look to the monitor, it's like the viewfinder. Here is the making of the video. And this is the mid gender. You know, this is a sketch I made it by computer as well because. It's very hard actually have to make it with uh, uh, a real dimension. And this is, was my sketch okay, for the exhibition. And this shot from the real exhibition. This photo was, I think it was like three meter by four meter. This was very huge. And this is the mid gender with the spider. Here is the final. This is the whole, this is the, this is called installations and photography and video art as well. It was a complete art project. Let's back again to photography. I was talking about the war because I'm always respect the photojournalist and I respect the snapshot and I respect the direct photography. This photo actually is by Mary F. Clever. This is not by me. But do you know the whole project that I did it, 
I think this photo can explain what I said and what I made in video and what I did. I made in photographs. This photo is talking about the whole project I did it. You see how the photography is a strong art. You know, you can imagine this solider, you know, he, he's opening his hand and he's lying on the bed and he take his uh, shoes off and he finally he pack home or you can imagine what this solider saw and finally he go home. I mean, photography is very strong and you can it changes the world with one photo. You don't have to do a big project, but if you are talented in photographs, you can change the world in one photo. Everything is clear, Vika? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It is not politics. We're talking about the politics of the whole world, by the way. No, no, it's, it's, it's important that uh, people in the audience do understand the thought process that has gone into making some of these uh, images. So, uh, so far, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, when I said in, in, in beginning of my presentation, I said, I don't need to record anymore. I need, uh, I, I don't want to record. I don't want to make a documentary photography. I need to talk with photos. So I didn't want to change the painter. I decided to talk with my uh, hobby, with my uh, uh, camera. I, I use it like the painter when he makes his, his brush, I mean. So I converted all the ideas that I need. I talk about it, all what I need, what's happening in society, what's happening in the whole world, actually. Every everything I need to talk about it, I start to talk about it with photographs. Uh, again, I think in 2011, I got another uh, PSA journal cover, and this was my exhibition. I was it was very nice for me to have another article cover in PSA. Also, I have in GPU, and uh, I made a very successful uh, uh, exhibition in 2014 in Greece with my great friend uh, Manelos Mazakis. You, we all know about it. He's the head of GPU, and uh, here is another cover in our area and Arab area. They start to interest, they start to understand what I'm talking about. And also the BSA cover, this is, uh, was Vikram, thank you Vikram for uh, giving me the chance to put my photo in the first edition of BSA journal, Arabic version. I mean, the people uh, and that when I'm doing uh, an art project that I'm about something important. Every image of mine, it has a meaning, if it has a concept behind it. Uh, sometimes I talk about uh, 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 my images and, or sometimes I leave it to the writer, to journalists to write about it. I mean, they can uh, read my art, they can uh, read my concepts, they can talk about my art. I don't have to make uh, any photo, uh, each photo to talk about it. The people understand uh, and the journalism understand, uh, start to understand uh, my style and they start to see behind of each images. Uh, this is, was from my traveling with my work. This is from PSA uh, in France and make uh, a lecture there and a feature speaker award. Some of my work internationally. When I made my fellowship and association ship, actually, I made it from the work. Uh, that I'm doing from my style of work. Actually, this is, I made it for the experimental photography. This is, was uh, uh, my FMIBP exam, the fellowship. And actually, I honor to get it. In 2008, I met the most photographer, the international photographer all over the world in China. And I was one with them, the Grand Photography Master Award. 
and then all of them become my friends and then we exhibit together in many places over the world and meet in many places again so this is, was a nice chance for me uh, in 2008 to get the grand photography master award in china and this is my work in china you see my work is displaying and i was very proud of it next to the most famous photographer all over the world and here is best photo award in china finale this is in dubai and this is me in china you look i, I was looking young in this photo let's back again about the concept okay in 2009 i made uh, an solo exhibition called the document the document it's mean in arabic it's called I mean, it's like a paper and paint. You see, because we have like, uh, when you say paper and pen, a paper and pen, or give me paper and pen, I made the name of this exhibition paper and pain, not a pen, not a pen. So I was talking in this, in this exhibition through 2019. I was talking about the paper. We always have a document. When I'm traveling to Sri Lanka, I have to go to the embassy to get an entry visa and blah, 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 many papers. When I go to uh, Europe, I have to go to get uh, many papers. I mean, we have a lot of paper in our world. So I was told that we have to open the borders between the whole world and we can move without paper. This photo was talking about it, uh, about this actually. You can imagine in 2019, I made a project called the document. I was asking to cut all the paper in our life and live like freedom. And the whole world is open uh, uh, to each other. We don't have uh, to put up borders between the countries. Okay? But what happening next uh, uh, year after 2019? Actually, we have the COVID. The COVID it was uh, you it, it was a, a very strange disease. The very strange virus get to all over the world and closed the borders. In 2019, I made exhibition to ask the people to open the port, the, their borders to all the country. In 2020, okay, 21, uh, we have the, the, the COVID and the, 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 the virus. This virus, actually, the journalist in Egypt asked me uh, what you will, will you do, how you can explain about Corona in art, how, I mean, uh, what kind of art you will do to express about Corona or to explain the COVID-19? Uh, my reply was, I, for myself, I don't understand what is COVID-19 uh, from the beginning. What is it? But I believe something in COVID-19. So I made this photo. I made myself and put my mask and put the photo that I was dreaming to open the borders. And this is my first time to do a self-portrait because this is my, my own vision about COVID. I said COVID-19 is made by a devil. It not came from God. It I, I believe that COVID-19 made by someone to destroy the world uh, so it is not disease from God, as they, everybody said. But I believe COVID-19 is a kind of war, and they push it to all the people. And we know many people die because of COVID or because the, the man who or the devil who made this virus for the people. And is that... <laughs> The very strange, strange things I think that the, the same devil who made the vaccine of the COVID-19. 
I'm sure that the devil who made COVID-19 who are or who is the same devil who make the vaccine for COVID. This is my own vision actually, and I explain it by this, the only image who I did it for COVID-19. And also I said, because this is my personal vision, that's why I put my personal portrait and this is, was my first time. And I presented this work in Armenia uh, two years ago. And I think I got certificates about it. COVID-19 by the This is another project, art project. I made it lately called Fire Extension. We, we can see many conferences. Uh, now we can, uh, I will tell you where I get the inspiration. We see many conferences all over the world talking about how to save our planet, how to save our planet, how we can save uh, our, uh, our ozone layer in the, uh, the, the Earth's planet and how we can save the wizard. Many conferences and they spent a lot of money and make travel all the president of all country travel and make a conference to talk about how to save the planet. And the strange thing is every president go back to his country and he start a new war or start to push army to fight another country. Uh, something like stupid world that we are living in. They are making conference to save animal, to save planet, and they to start doing a war. And we believe in all this kind of war is for oil and gold. It's not for defending or to uh, pretending the land or to defense the land. So uh, it was international exhibition. It was for uh, modern art and installation as well. So I get this idea, fire extension, you know, fire extension. I was talking to one of my friends about what happening in our world and what happening in our society and how much pain we all the people have inside. We have a lot of pain, a pain of the, the money market, a pain of the war, a pain of the disease, a, a pain of actually the world become like uh, burning all the people, I mean. Uh, or uh, the world it is not become safe like before. Or I, I, I don't know, Yanni, I mean, like always we have a war, we have a bad thing is happening around us. So I said to my friend, I need a fire extinguisher and put it in my mouth to, to shut down the fire that's running into my chest. This was a conversation between me and one friend and one of my friends. And then when they invite me to this exhibition, international exhibition about installation and video art, I made this project is called Fire Extinguisher. Here is the concept. I will leave this, you can read it very easy. I mean to, you can read it. I mean the air is no longer a rough for our chassis. The air is not, no longer uh, enough for our chassis. I mean, we can't trust the air around us, the air we are breathing, we can't trust it. So you can imagine the world we are living now, you can't trust the air. The air is full of fires, is full of war, is full of virus, is full of uh, devils who are trying to catch the treasure of the other countries. I mean, this is what happening. So I made this project called Fire Extinguisher. This is, was the concept. He knows the air is, carries more toxin now. Here is a sketch. I'm always a start like a sketch. This is a sketch I made it by computer. We find in the middle, this is the installation. This is a diver, but he, he didn't have uh, oxygen tank behind him. He didn't have air tank, oxygen tank. He have uh, a fire extinguisher. Okay, this is a diver under the water. I mean, 
but he he convert the air that he have to persist into fine extinguisher like dreaming that he will uh, shut off the fire that going inside of him in the left we see this is the place of video art you can see and in the middle i have three photos because i'm always using photography in my work here is a project a normal model and this is a mannequin i made it especially for this to sit into the the square the glass square and here is the installation after i finish it here is how i it. we see photographs and video art in the left in the circle okay and the square uh that uh, set the divers on it and with the fire extension we have here every single thing in this project is have a concept you see the land under the driver is like uh, the land and uh, the photos the land in the water actually is dry land we are living now in dry land what i'm feeling that our earth become um, a dry land but it's not dependent on the conference to save our planet it's depend on the people how to act like an angle not like uh, like a devil here is another angle from my art project and we see here is the people when they are visiting my exhibition it is what a group exhibition it was around more than 45 artists in this exhibition actually it was in palace of art in cairo opera house and here's the people uh, read the concept and the, when you visit any art exhibition i ask you please read the concept of the artist and then go to watch his work don't forget to read the concept because the concept is the key to understand what the art is talking about. You can see. Actually, this costs uh, a lot of money for me, but I mean, I'm not a rich man, but when I'm doing this kind of project, I feel like I become like free because I make my scream take it out i take what the pain out when i finish any art project i said like i did my job in this world actually you see how the reflection of the visitor with my work it was very nice actually this was lately one year ago this is my my latest or my last art project This is the photography. And this is the three images. You see how I put my work left or right. I'm using the composition of the photography. Here is again another angle. And also the newspaper and the TV always cover my, my work. Finally, Finally, here is my art project. I will keep this slide. You can read in 2000, from 2006 until 2022. I mean, uh, if you take of my, uh, each one of this is, is a full project. This is not a photo. This is a full album, by the way. If you go to my website, you will find each album contains about from 30 to 40 photos. But I mean, when I look to my history in photography and art, you will find this history is related to the history of my country and the history of my life and the history of my world. Actually, we have a revolution in Egypt, so you find from 2012 until 2014 something called about our, our about the revolution in Egypt, but in artistic way. Uh, I mean, in Venice Pinelli, uh, I made a, uh, a video art as well. It was 2010 in Venice Pinelli, and it was a very important movie 
called uh, The Search of Salvation. I made it in 2010, Venice Benelli. And this is a dream of any artist to exhibit in Venice Benelli, by the way. This was in 2010. It was called The Search of Salvation. Uh, it was architecture Benelli. And the concept of my movie in this Benelli that I'm asking the designers and the engineering who I'm doing architecture, how are you doing this kind of towers and building? And on the other hand, we find the man is make a production for a palm or something to destroy this uh, building you are doing. So I was asking the people to, you have to stop the war in the world first before uh, you make design for these huge towers. Uh, now I will show some of my project uh, uh, and then we can take the question. It's now sometimes okay. Now, before I start, this is my experimental photography. You understand how I think, how I do my work, uh, how I explain about myself in photos. That's why I converted from direct photography to experimental maybe personal, maybe related to the society, maybe related to the whole world that we are living in. This is a kind, it's called protection, by the way, this is a kind of, of protection. A doll playing with two dolls, This is talking about how we destroy the green land and start put a building over it. This photo explaining when we destroy the green land that have fruits and trees and convert it into buildings. Uh, this is actually a very funny one. Uh, I, I like this photo, by the way, because I, I made it in 2011. I think I call this one, it's called democracy, democracy. Always we say it, democracy is called democratic system. And But if you don't have a system and you have a democratic, so you will find all the people talking at the same time. You can listen like this is the tape by... Uh, uh, a cassette tape, I mean. You will listen to the people, blah, 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 blah. You can see the here. I mean, democratic. If you need a democratic, so you have to do a democratic system. But democratic, without system, you will see this kind of, the whole things go to each other and all the people are talking at the same time. Okay? Uh, so you will listen to nothing. And I believe there is no democratic in the world because we have a lot of war until now. The quiz, it's called the quiz. Who can fix this cube? Okay, it's very hard. <laughs> it's talking about war as well. This is Nefertiti, that is in uh, African Union building. This is our cover.
I made about 14 solo exhibitions. So this is some of the exhibitions. This is one of them, it's called Silent of the Body. And uh, uh, about 14 solo exhibitions and I exhibited like more than 200 international and national group exhibition. I have nine uh, video arts. Yeah, while the uh, images keep flowing, uh, Aman, let me uh, also mention or take a few of the things that have been commented on the chat. Okay. Uh, there was one particular uh, comment or a question that had been asked uh, by one of the participants, Prabhat uh, Angampoli, Angampoli, sorry. Uh, this is a speech that managed to direct us to a number of very valuable ideas. Uh, please accept my Thanks. Also, I feel that the red color has been used more in socializing your ideas. Is there a reason for that? Okay. Uh, actually, the red color is uh, uh, two reasons for the red color. I mean, if the concept mentions something uh, related to uh, blood or something like this, I mean, uh, a music read, but actually uh, it is something related to the composition and for the visual attraction. We know in the photography that red is very strong color. In this image, actually, this was exhibition core artery. Artery, it is uh, the uh, artery in that uh, floating blood to our heart. This exhibition was called artery, but I mean, red color is very catchy and uh, 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 very uh, nice for the composition, I mean, for the visual attraction, very strong color. But uh, for sure, it have a lot of meaning of my images. Thank you, Arman. Uh, there's one other question, which I believe uh, we might have to spend another entire session on this one. Uh, how do you plan uh, the use of the lights? Because, ah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the light actually depended on uh, the concept. Sometimes I am use uh, one light direction, like Rembrandt style. I mean, I use, use one head. Uh, and actually for myself, I like this style because it is artistic. But when I'm planning to do a uh, portrait like this, uh, this one, I mean, this one, this photos that we see now is this one direction lighting. I like the background uh, uh, to be looks like black, like this is uh, solid black. But in this kind of photos, I mean, I could can use two uh, lights or full lighting because, you know, uh, I, I, I know I need the whole face with lighting. I need uh, to put I know to, that I will add some effects or I will add some emotion over the photo. That's why I use the normal lighting of photography uh, to uh, right and left and also uh, make lighting to the background because I will separate the figures from the background. This is uh, because I'm doing a sketch because I know the final result of my image that I will do it. That's why uh i plan the lighting before i'm going to shoot i mean this one uh, as example i make it like full lighting and full lighting for the background because i know i will take the figure out okay and she was wearing a white dress that's why i use uh a, a, a blue chroma by the way i'm using blue chroma and we see many symbolic in this photo you can see two fishes living together in the same frame but each one go to another direction. You see the, the fish is on the frame and this is the, not the place of the fish the, to leave. The girl is leaving the water and the fish is living on the frame and you find two fish 
is leaving uh, each one go to uh, another direction. This normal lighting, I say. You see, this is full lighting because I know that I will add some features after this. And you can see the symbolic like uh, the window will go nowhere. There is a, gondo, a closed window. This is a kind of uh, the most difficult kind of photography, the surrealism, by the way. And I like it very well, but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work, actually. But it's a beautiful uh, uh, because it's like uh, Delhi style, Salvador Delhi style. But you can see, uh, you can say a lot of uh, of con the concept. I mean, you can put the full concept over it. This is called surrealism photography. See, this is full of symbolic now. This is full of symbolic. This is I made it because. In our revolution and the revolution people die many people die so here now the the, the meat converted from green that I, I said before now it become red because many people die in our revolution and you see the basket uh, the basket pool is stand this is a sign that each time you put the ball is going down there is it is like symbolic the basketball when you put the ball is going down it will not it, it will not stay on the basket. This is mean it's like continuous life. You will go, never go to the end. I mean, uh, the artists have their own language. I see this one is dreaming for the people who are dying on a boat when they're traveling from uh, country to country, when they're traveling illegal, I mean, and uh, sinking on, on the water by using illegal uh, way to travel, dreaming. This is a snapshot, by the way. This is completely Dali style, by the way. This is the color that Salvador Dali used. It. While the images keep strolling, uh... Would there be any questions that we can uh, take up uh, from the audience, please? Uh, I've, I've got a few on the chat, which I have shared with everyone. Okay, uh, there's one question that just came in. Uh, how important uh, pre-imaginations uh, are to this kind of experimental photography? That's a question for you, Ivan. Yes, tell me again. Uh, how important are the pre-imaginations? I believe the conceptualizing, the kind of sketching that you do uh, are to this kind of experimental photography is what is being asked. How important is it? Yes, it's very important because, do you know, the inspiration comes, not comes all the time, by the way. Do you know, in our life, I'm working, I'm doing commercial, my commercial work. But sometimes you you get the mood of uh, feeling and, uh, you know, the artistic atmosphere. I mean, sometimes you listen to the music, nice music. Sometimes you meet people and have a cultural conversation. 
So not all the time you have the inspiration. The inspiration for the artist is came very few times in your life or 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 I mean on or, or your day. I, maybe you stay like three or four months, you can't get inspiration because you are living for earning money to live. But when you get this kind of inspiration, so I go directly to sketches because I don't want to lose this kind feeling that I have in this moment. When I have this kind feeling, I convert it into sketch and leave the sketch uh, to, to the side until I start to do exhibition. I find I have like 10 or 20 or like 30 sketches. So I start to mix shoot it. So the sketch is like the notes so when you have like an idea in your mind so you can write it in a notes in a paper the sketch is very important because if you leave your yourself you didn't do the sketch in this time of inspiration you will forget it or maybe your feeling will completely be different i i finish now maybe we can get some question before if you need to talk about AI intelligent, uh, I have like two slides because this is the monster that come to our life. But let's take the question first and let me tell you the solution of AI or artificial intelligence. What about it, I mean? Uh, I have a chat here, but I didn't want to touch my screen because of uh, the line. Uh, if, if if there's any question, you can read it to me, Vikram. Uh, can I be heard? Can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you, uh, Rosa. Yes. yes, yes, go ahead, uh, Mr. Rafti. This uh, yes. firstly, thank you for the very uh, informative and creative presentation. We have learned a lot of, out of it. Uh, my question: uh, You were talking about inspiration. Inspiration. Uh, as I understood it, uh, you said it is coming out of the understanding that you have of the world. So in order to understand the world, uh, what are the theoretical subjects that has influenced you uh, so that you could understand the world deeply? That is okay. one of my questions. That is one of my questions. So that even in order to uh, come out of a, uh, uh, create a concept, I think uh, that deep understanding is, uh, must have helped. Then the other, other, the second question that I have is now uh, your all most of your photographs that are show, that was shown to us uh, is uh, actually focused more not not. Uh, uh, on uh, giving pleasure to the people, but trying to give a message so that you will create a background uh, to uh, turn that uh, person into think to think uh, about the message that you are giving. So uh, just give us an idea of the international community that appreciates your photographs. Are there a lot of people who has that ability to appreciate and understand your photographs internationally? Those are the two questions. Thank you. Okay. This is very important question, but let me tell you the story of mine. In the beginning, I was, when I convert, let me tell you why I convert my work into experimental because I have an exhibition and I want to do it. So I found because I, from the beginning, like to shoot portrait, I decided to put the models and make this model, put the story of mine over the models after I shoot it. I mean, yeah. So in the beginning, uh, when the people come to my exhibition, they uh, their feedback, I mean, the comment about my photo. Wow, what a beautiful model you have. You see, they was, were telling me, wow, what a beautiful models you have in your photographs. So I'm feeling upset because 
No, I didn't talk about models, by the way. I have a story. But when I start to go on my style and to start to write a con uh, the concept of mine and to start to talk to journalism and to start to talk to about my concept, I mean, the people start to understand, oh, this artist is never talk about model he didn't he didn't talk about beauty he have a concept so always trying to convert as i told me before convert to what happening in the world around us i take it and convert it to visual way convert what happening uh, not to direct way i have to put symbolic that talking about uh, what what inspire me and also when yani, i mean if we have a war between uh, happening in 1999 so i didn't talk about the war that happening in 1999 i'm talking about the whole world is that happening before and tomorrow and today and next uh, day i mean the people start to understand my work but even when I find the concept, I didn't talk about this concept directly. I have to put simply and make my image work for all the time, for all the years. You understand me? Oh, sorry, you understand me? You get this point? I mean, never me work talking about uh, a period of time exactly. We are not journalists because the journalist records this photo happening in 1999, in January or in February, you have an exactly date. But if I want to reflect this photo or what happening in this time into art, I have to make this art global to the people to understand it all. And does it mention this uh, uh, date exactly? I mean, I got the inspired and talk about it like global and could work in any time. Okay, you got it? Yes, thank you. Uh, just another question regarding yes. uh, 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 regarding the work that you have done uh, about uh, uh, the outer appearance of the person and the inner feeling of the person, uh, that project, now, uh, you were talking about uh, Rembrandt lighting. This is on lighting. I would like to ask you specially uh, if you could, uh, I don't know whether you will be able to do this, but if you could uh, take an image out of that uh, particular project and explain to us. Now, you, talk, you talked about the lighting. You talked yes. about the lighting. You said, uh, sometimes uh, I, I can remember your explanation about the backlighting so that the image in front will uh, jut up and it will be focused uh, to the viewer, uh, things like that. But uh, could you talk about the lighting, the, the lightings that you have used and the feelings that you were trying to express? Because you are a person more than, as I said, more than the pleasure of the photo you are trying to convey a particular message. If you could explain how the lighting was used to convey that message, it will be great. Thank you. Okay. Actually, the lighting is very important. Uh, uh, because... Excuse me, uh, Ayman, I believe what you might want to do is to uh, pick up uh, an image from your lot, okay. most probably, uh, the one that uh, Rosen was talking about, uh, I believe that's the angel in the water, uh, with a fish in the background. One he's referring to. Uh, just one will not have time to go through every single image, but maybe pick that particular image up and then uh, walk through the uh, lighting elements of this particular presentation. So that might be useful. You mean this Thanks. one? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in this one, this is, uh, for me, this is the easy lighting because this is the lighting when you're shooting 
a full lighting, this is very easy for me. Uh, it's, it's actually, rather... it's actually, uh, sorry, Ayman, uh, it's actually lighting and then the emotion that you are trying to communicate to the viewer of this image uh, and how the uh, lighting uh, is, uh, is what, what, what is being asked for. Uh, and if you may uh, please uh, enlarge the image to uh, full screen. Thank you. Okay. Let me advise you something. When uh, I mean the artist, you don't have to talk much about your concept and leave the people imagine what it's talking about. Okay. But let me tell you, uh, because uh, I need the reflection of the people, not because this is maybe this is my story on the image. So I don't have to tell the people about my my problems or my story because I I, I, I put my image and take the reflection from the people. The people, each one, the viewer see it. They tell me what they are feeling. But I give you the key, the keys why I make these photos, okay? Uh, in the beginning, I said technical, I make full lighting for the model because she wearing like, a paper dress, dress made from paper because this call a document, this is from the exhibition, called the document that I said paper and pain. Okay. Now she's one sitting uh, a third of it under the water. Okay. And her head inside the frame. Okay. Maybe you can, if you can read this one, uh, uh, because this kind of person. She living into a frame or she a living uh, in a prison life. I mean, her life, she didn't, uh, didn't feel free in her life. She living into a frame because her head in the frame. And her address from paper. So this dress, if she go into the water with this dress, you know, this dress was destroyed. Uh, in the images on... Uh, the wall, you find that I told you can before, you find two fish are living in the same frame, but each one go to di direction. Maybe you can, uh, if you are, if you are a writer and you need to write about this, it's maybe two person have different culture, have different emotions, have different feeling, have different experience are living in the same place. So this kind of photo, uh, I mean, this means, this is the meaning of two fish, each one go to direction, okay? And I told you about the dress and I told you about the head of the main model that inside the frame and the third of the photo into water and the other uh, out of water shows she can go down, okay? She will sink and her dress will destroy or she can't go up because she's inside the frame. This is actually, maybe uh, you can, if you are personally look to a photo like this, maybe it related to your life, it related to your society, it related to your country, maybe it related to our world. Because we are living in our world, we can't go run away from our countries because we are grow up here, and we are living into a frame. We need to travel away from uh, the bad life, but you can't travel because you can't leave your family, maybe, or your history or your freedom, I mean. So this is the conceptual photography. It has a thousand of meaning. Each one can read it by his own way. All what the artist have to express his personal feeling and put like the, the, the keys. So you have many keys in this photo. You understand me? Yes. That's yes. why I'm asking, uh, when you go to international exhibition or to a museum, you have to learn how to read art, how to read art or how to comment on art or how to judge because if I'm judging and uh, I saw this kind of photos, uh, uh, when I'm judging. So I'm trying to read what the photographer or what the artist need to express or need to, to explain, I mean, need to talk about. So if I get the keys from him, so I will understand that he have 
a concept. I don't have to know the, the, the concept exactly, but if I reflect uh, a special concept for myself, I uh, uh, respect this kind of uh, a conceptual art. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, I, if I may, if I may just add to that, uh, add to what I mean said, uh, I'm going to quote uh, what's in the public domain right now from Romos uh, from Cyprus, uh, one of our uh, good colleagues and a friend. And he says, in a world with angels and framed fish, water rising does good for neither. Think about it. In a world with angels and framed fish. Yes, perfect. The rising perfect is see. good for yes. night. So uh, yes. it's another, another perspective. Thank you, Romas. Thank you, Romas, for your for reading. Actually, now you can now we read art. Now it's this different kind. I never think about how he thinks. I have my own. This is the communication between the people and the artists and the viewer and this is the pleasure of explaining. So I don't have to tell you what I mean, but I need to know the reflection of you. Thank you, Romas, for your great reading, by the way. I like it. You are most welcome. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for all the comments, my... Uh, the friend is JR, okay, from USA, from PSA. Yes, I need to acknowledge the presence of JR, our president of PSA, and his wife, Lisa, in the group. And uh, we have Nan Kader, who is the former secretary to the board of PSA. And we have Kanchana Marasinghe, who is our ex or immediate past president of the Art Society and uh, immediate past uh, country liaison for FIAP in the group. Uh, thank you so much for your presence. Very much appreciated taking time off to attend this. And any other questions to before before we wind up? Or any yeah, comments? If I, if, I, if, I, if I may, or the last question. I, I hope that I, I'm not bothering you too much. <laughs> this, uh, uh, you said, uh, after understanding the world, you turn that in, uh, turn that thought or the concept into a photographic image. So the understanding that I have is, as a photographer, we should be within the lines of that particular medium of photography. Now, uh, looking at some of the images created, uh, which are um, which uh, gives uh, very good uh, convey very good messages to the viewer, the appreciator. Uh, but uh, uh, the things like war uh, on the title of war, I think, or the game, I I can't remember very well. Certain conceptual photos that you have created. Uh, now, uh, art is taking uh, the pencil. He can draw anything and everything that comes to his mind. But as photographers, we uh, are uh, within a particular framework in order to uh, have that identity of photography. But I feel certain conceptual photographs that you have created, uh, whether they are within the medium of photography, are falling in, into the, uh, to the meaning of photography. You okay. may, you may, you may also, you may also uh, give your ideas on AI and things like that because it will come up in the future in a big way, and uh, uh, it may sort of either expand the uh, boundaries of photography or uh, you might comment on that also, please. Uh, okay, I need to interject here a, a bit, Rosen. Uh, excuse me for this. Uh, I mean, you may answer the first question, the second one on AI. Uh, you may express your views for the time being, uh, not in detail, but uh, what you feel it's going to be, because we will be having another session somewhere down the line on uh, dedicated for AI in photography, because these are this is something that has been coming up in various forums. And uh, as photographers, as artists, we need to 
appreciate the fact that are, the technology is taking us and how uh, and what changes we will uh, soon come to uh, you know uh, visualize and experience uh, ourselves so uh, okay. please go ahead so I, I understand from the question for you that this correct for me uh, Vikram that he uh, uh, telling me that uh, my photographs is most of them are have like conceptual not direct photography this is uh, what he mean uh, I, I believe that's what Rosen is getting at so okay. uh, most, most of your photographs the portraits that you have displayed uh, using models uh, have I think they are within the uh, framework of photography that photographic identity as a medium as a separate medium from other mediums are there but when you take you, certain you are with us in the beginning yeah I mean you attend the, the the presentation from the beginning yes okay. let back again to the presentation my um, my job I'm doing like photographs in my commercial job I'm doing commercial photography I mean and I'm doing direct photography like photo travel and everything and portray and this is uh, in the beginning I show I mean like this this is my photography a travel photography okay but why I convert it because I need to talk, I told you because I can't do photography by the way, all kinds of photography. I'm doing a commercial photography, I'm doing shooting video, I'm shooting uh, like uh, uh, architecture, I'm shooting like fashion, I'm, I'm doing all kinds of photography by the way. But when I present myself with my style, I will not use these photos by the way. All this kind of photos I put it on my website, or when I'm traveling, I'm using my camera because. I have the passion of any photographer, okay? But because if you search about my name, I'm a Lutfi, or my style, you will find this the style that I created for myself. But I can't do normal photography. I mean, I can't shoot any kind of photography. And I don't believe that everyone can do everything, by the way, but I can, if I need to shoot like a commercial photography, I'm doing a cover magazine, I'm shooting like a product, I'm shooting a painting, uh, I'm even I'm a specialist in shooting painting, by the way. But when I'm traveling, I'm doing like uh, some nice photography, I didn't want to say beautiful. But this is not my mission, this is not my, uh, what I'm feeling with photography. Uh, that I need to photograph. What I'm feeling to do, the work that I show it to you, okay? This is, the, this is my hobby. I didn't play, play, I didn't play uh, PlayStation, by the way. This is my hobby. I'm doing experimental and conceptual photography. My, my talent, when I have something hurting me from inside, I take it out from myself into artwork. So I become like a very, normal man after this but if i keep every pain deep inside of me i didn't convert it into art i will convert into a crazy person by the way so my hobby in the world i or my pleasure to convert everything hurting me in this world into a beautiful art that's why i'm using conceptual photography you get it or i understand yes. my yes Yes, okay. I do get it. I, I I do get it. And congratulations on the photographs that you have really created. They are very, I mean, the messages that are being conveyed is very, very good. I, I, I Congratulations on that. But I'm talking about the identity of the medium of photography versus certain photographs that you show I, I don't care i don't care i don't care what the people call it what kind of art maybe you can call it mixed media you know i exhibit in international and national exhibition so i don't care what the people call this kind of work I, we didn't call i didn't it's kind of art i mean you can i don't need the people call it photography by the way you can call it a conceptual art a con a mixed media if you're caring about photography well, I, you don't have to tell to talk about my work as this is, is this photography because i didn't say it is photography but it is calling 
experimental photography. And I have a question here from one Y, Sanka, Sanka Silva. There is an important question here from uh, Sanka Silva. I think this is the right name I said. Yeah. I believe he's asking whether if you use conceptual photography for journalism yeah. art, does it still concept, does it still fall under conceptual uh, or is it, uh, does it become journalism art? Okay, yeah. let's go to this question. This is very important. Okay. Okay. Conceptual art, it is meaning a photo has a meaning behind it. Photo have a meaning behind it. This is the conceptual photography. What I mean, I mean this, uh, let, let's say here, this photo, it is pure direct photography. You agree uh -huh. with me all? This photo, it is a pure direct photography. Okay? This is called photojournalism. But when I see, I, I look at this work, it's called conceptual photojournalism. This is conceptual. I mean conceptuals that have a meaning, have idea, have a story, you can say. This is the conceptual. So this is conceptual. So conceptual can work on serial lens or on this kind, I mean conceptual, work for maybe the democracy shot this one. Okay, this conceptual because it have a concept and I said the concept is democracy. Okay, but this is called experimental because it's not direct photography because I have a text like uh, uh, a calligraphy over uh, the photo. Okay, this is called experimental and conceptual photography before because it have a concept. The best kind of photography is uh, the direct and experimental and serialism that have a concept. So conceptually, we can say to all the photos that have a meaning, that reflect a meaning. Uh, so we can say this is a conceptual. This kind of photo in the screen, this is completely experimental because it's have a lot of editing. So it's a model and then many photos mix it together to give this kind of photo. For the first look, we say this called experimental. But if this experimental shot reflected to me a feeling, a story, an emotion, so we say this is an experimental and conception. Also for the serialism, but the serialism is very hard to say have the concept because the serialism itself, it's like a dream. The serialism photo, you like look to a dream. It's like you are dreaming. But it's always have not uh, the, the, the direct concept or have no conceptual. Okay, this one like this, this is called serialism. But this one, I mean, this is serialism and conceptual photography. Let me tell you why. Now we see this photo, okay? There is no door. This is like a home. Have a window only. There is no door. So she can't go in. This person that sit in the in the land, she have a cup and she wish to have uh, a, a little tea from this cup, from this bottle, I mean. But she can't because it's very heavy. You can't turn it, uh, uh, left it to the model, okay? To, to the person that she, uh, she said. And she can't go inside. She will stay here forever and she wish to have some tea. This tea is called, uh, maybe, see, this is maybe uh, the beautiful things in our land, the treasure of our land that we are living in, but we can't get anything from it. Many people living in a country, a rich country, but a lot of poor people. So poor people can get enough from uh, the treasure of their country. Now this is kind of concept. So this is called serialism and concept. And I wish you can understand me, please. It's my, uh, 
Is is this clear for you now? You can understand the yes. difference. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, Mr. Ayman. Thank you very much. I understood very well. Uh, actually, I am a first year student, and uh, this uh, session is very much valuable for me. Uh, and uh, I wish you all the very best for future endeavors and stay blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank you for the messages. I read it all actually, but I'm, I'm very happy for your feedback. Uh, uh, all and thank you, Vikram, for giving me the opportunity to have this, all these kind people. Lily, I like you all, and I wish to come to Sri Lanka to say hi to all. I will plan to come one day, actually, because. Uh, oh, hopefully, if, if all things work out, the PSA way, we, we, we should uh, be having all of you in Sri Lanka anytime yes, soon. Have to. <laughs> yeah, we need the conference of PSA in Sri Lanka, okay? <laughs> well, we I'm, I'm writing because Jaya is on, on, on our session right now. <laughs> Jaya, okay. would you mind showing your face uh, so that everyone knows uh, the president of PSA is in attendance of this session? Jaya, you're there? Ah, there you go. You are on mute. Yes, yep. and we are all excited for the 2025 photo gathering <laughs> in Sri Lanka. And um, I'm a, Thank you. it is always a pleasure to be in contact with you. I look forward to spending some time with you personally. Hopefully it'll be in Sri Lanka, if not anywhere sooner. So thank you. Thank you, Jar. Thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for your... Thank you, Jar. Uh, thank thank He's a great photographer, by the way, and the great head of PSA, and very kind person, actually. And uh, I enjoyed it. I visited uh, 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 New Mexico in 2014, and I was have the pleasure to meet uh, all the members there, uh, most of them, and say hi to Joanna. She, she's my best friend, and she came to Egypt, actually. She's a, a very beautiful person, actually. Yes, and uh, I will pass that along to Joanne. Um, and you never know, I might show up in Egypt sometime and look. Yes, yeah, yeah. I uh, come, come. I will make you visit the same places that I the, the, the drive Joanna to. Okay, you will enjoy, really, you will enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what a great presentation, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank, thank you so much, Amon. Uh, and I believe uh, the audience would have uh got learned a lot i learned a lot because uh, this is something completely different to my usual uh scheme of things which is to do with nature travel and wildlife uh and i think i'm in your view kind of set a uh, tone uh into the modern uh, uh days uh, art photography uh, if I may say so, because I think we are quite used to uh, taking images and then possibly merging them together to make composites. But here you bring in an entirely new element of uh, presentation altogether, starting from ground up, zero up, which is to do with your emotions. And then you start sketching it. And then you start actually building it up, bottom up, into a into a into a real life composite and i think that's entirely different to what we have come to know uh, previously and i believe a lot of lot of us uh, have learned a lot from you with this session and uh, i thank you for your time uh, uh, if i may ask uh, uh, sankar and sankar who is the publications director for uh, of the art society that's our counterpart fiap larson uh, uh, Shantagunatna, Shantaya, you're there. I'd like to thank Mr. Ayman. This is a very good presentation and it's a good initiative by uh, Sanka. I think we are going to do uh, these kind of uh, presentations in the future also. And uh, we are happy to have this presentation. And uh, I'd like to thank Vikom also to conduct in this presentation very well. And thank you all, the participants. We'd like to thank you all. Uh, Sanka, you are there. Sanka. Right. Thank you so much for your time, everyone, uh, Sankar. Uh, so as, as I said at the beginning, these, uh, these are second session uh, jointly moderated between me as the controller for PSA and uh, Shantar 
uh, as the country liaison for FIAP, and we also have Mr. Bandhu Gunaratta, who is the country liaison for uh, GPU in attendance in this session. And uh, of course, uh, the rest of the uh, people who have attended, uh, I believe there are lots of students here of first year to the third year and uh, practicing professionals who would have learned uh, through the experiences or through the mindset of what Ayman presented. Now, that is not something carved in stone. It will change by each person, how I view war uh, to how Ayman would view war uh, to how another person would view war is entirely different. And the emotions attached to each of those uh, life's triggers, if I may call them, is going to be different to uh, each other. So the emotions that come out and what I would sketch to what Ayman would sketch to what Jair would sketch uh, is and to what Samira would sketch would be different. But this has opened out an entirely a new uh, viewpoint, I believe. And, uh, and I think, you know, possibly it's time that, you know, you are doing what AI is doing in a, in a, in a physical sense, I would say. Uh, I believe that's, that's where this whole thing is leading up to. This is why I didn't want you to talk too much about AI. But you are, uh, please feel free to say, if you uh, wish to, Ayman, over to you about AI and what you think for the benefit of this group, what do you think AI is going to play or the role that AI is going to play in photography, videography, and what not in the future, in the coming years? Because we are going to have an entirely dedicated session for this down the line on this series. Now, let me tell you about the, 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 the monster of what's happening now. You can imagine each uh, photo of mine that I did it from the shooting, the sketch, and did it taken about from two weeks to one month working. Now I'm trying try it to do one of my concept with AI. I actually, I wrote it and I finished uh, a complete image in 30 minutes. So, sorry, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? I made a photo in 30 seconds. The photo that takes from me camera and uh, hardware and software and lenses and models uh, and you know it's uh, the cost of our the one shot that we have yet the problem that all the people are afraid from afraid from ai okay and this is what happening always you know when we convert our life from film to digital camera the old photographer asked me don't use the digital camera use the film don't use photoshop Okay, until now, they ask, they tell that the new generation never use Photoshop, but I tell the new generation, use everything you have, use all the softwares you have, study very well, because the next days, there is will be for the technology. But as I told you, who is the rider? Who is the controller? The technology have no feeling. But now the AI or the artificial intelligence, it's not made for people to play by the way and make photos and to join competition or photo uh, photo contest it made for the designer because the world it was go very 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 fast no times okay i'm working advertising company and the, the client come to me to ask me i need a campaign for one week now the client come and ask me i need the campaign for two hours to be in the television and to be outdoors okay the time will run so fast, so you will be enforced to use the technology. So if you didn't study and understand the technology now, you will be like the, the film of the camera now. Nobody's using it, okay? So I didn't interest in to, to do my experience in and using AI, by the way, because, you know, let me tell you what I'm feeling when I'm doing my idea with AI. Do you know when you find, uh, you know, uh, when you go to the doctor and give you a child, you, tell, you, you don't have a child, so you go to the doctor and give you, take this child and uh, live with him. I know you didn't get married and have 
your own personal life and then you got a child. You got a child without marrying as well. You didn't touch anyone and you got a child. This is the feeling of AI. I don't have it. I don't feel it. But I can, I can use it for the commercial life. The commercial life, there is no time, okay? I need now a design. I need now a poster. I need now a, a, a. So I ask all the young people and all the, the, the students, go and understand what intelligent uh, artificial, okay? And go and understand and study shared GBT because this is the future and you have to use it, not because no use for the human being. You will have a wide vision. We are the controller, okay? Let me show you the images that I made with 30 seconds by AI, okay? I tried with AI to understand how the computer think, because the computer is not a human being, but it's, it's a machine, is thinking. So when I'm trying to use AI, I try to do my style and my vision, and I didn't want to do something different. So I told you, each image for me from the sketch to the final uh, result is take from one week to one month, the one image. But in 30 minutes, sorry, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, not minutes, 30 seconds, I made this photo by AI. I just tried two lines, a beautiful Egyptian pharaohs, okay, with one direction lighting, okay, and I said 4K quality. You see, in 30 seconds, I get this image. Can you imagine this is, is related to my style? Related, it's the same my style. So, uh, you know, I don't know what, what kind of this monster. But you know, it is not my daughter. It is not my image. I, I, I get it in 30 seconds, I get this image. So this is the future, this is what's coming. But we have to make the young people, okay, and the student learn how to do this actually. Because, but they have to be creative because if you're doing a design for a room, I mean, it's for apartment, if you're doing, uh, a design for a tower. So you have to put your concept, your style, and then make the design. For the artistic way, I said, artistic, you need to feel the brush, you need to feel, to touch the painting itself. But this is what happened, okay? You see, this is in 30 seconds. And uh, actually, I tried to print it. Let me show you something with for a minute. Even this is this is low resolution, by the way. Okay, this image is like eighty uh, pixel, eight hundred pixel by eight hundred pixel. I will show you. Look how I made it. Uh, how, how size I made it. This is after printing, printed and I frame it. You see how, how it's very big, by the way. This is by the way eight hundred pixel. It's not twelve megabyte. It's not twenty four megabyte. It's eight. 100 pixel by 800 pixel. And look to the quality, look to the resolution. Okay. But I correct it by, by the way, I make it by I print it by myself because I have my printer here. So we have to learn. We have to learn. Okay. The, 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 my friend who was asking me that uh, your work is not uh, the, the pure photography. You will not find the camera anymore because the AI, you can ask, I can make Vacam playing football, by the way, if I, I took your photo and asked the computer, make you like a jazz player or playing football, or whatever. he will take you personally. But the emotionally, it, it, you don't, it, it doesn't have the emotion, but I mean, it will work for something. So please keep the people study to understand how the computer think to work with it. We have to, to follow the technology. Because, يعني, I mean, why are you uh, impressed from the result of the AI? You have to be impressed for the people who made the artificial intelligence, who made it, the programmers who made this for us. So we have to take care. But the personality, let me tell you, don't be worried because we are the mind, we are the soul, we are the feeling, we are the controller. 
it's a machine anyway, it's like a machine. So we will control the machine and the wallet will find it like run very fast. So all we have to do, run next to the wallet. We didn't want to lose uh, our jobs or our uh, our professions that we are doing. We have to study and, and believe me, the feeling, nobody can put the feeling. I told you an avatar, and we say that when they are working CGI, a long time ago, by the way, they are doing CGI. No people shooting cars now. A long time, many years ago, nobody shooting cars because the car is already designed by, by, by computer. The full car is designed uh, and the interior and the, how the car is designed by computer. So uh, the computer is like 3D, so you can convert it into 360. So why I shoot it? And you can choose the kind of lighting you need. You ask as a computer, so nobody is shooting a car now. So, and if this technology, we, now we're always talking about give a symbol like a cinema industry. If the cinema industry, the director of the cinema, uh, it, it, it doesn't have the culture of the technology, he maybe cost uh, one movie like $2 billion and the same other uh, director call it 100,000 uh, US dollars, okay? And he make it better than the one who, who spent 2 billion. I mean, this is, we are the people, we are the human being, we are the talented, we are the creative, okay? And, but we have to use the machine, but use it carefully, just ride it. Why I say ride it? Because we ride the horse and the bike. I said, don't say drive it. I said, ride it. I mean, okay, control and ride it like a bike or like a horse. And I wish all the best for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amin. Uh, I think that you just set the tone for the future uh, presentations on AI. So you just set the ground uh, to kickstart things on AI because these are these are discussion that we had back in India during the USA put a gathering. Uh, I, JR took the lead on that discussion. Subsequently, I had uh, I was a participant to one of the sessions that is conducted by the Australian Photographic uh, Judges Association, uh, which is uh, which deep dived into the subject of uh, AI in photography and how that is going to change the entire landscape of uh, photography in the future. But I think since there are students out here, don't get uh, overly excited about using uh, AI in your coursework unless it has been uh, part and parcel of your, uh, you know, uh, course uh, curriculum. Uh, you should not uh, misuse the tools that are at hand to, uh, you know, uh, cheat the system. Uh, that's one of the advice that I, I can share with you. Because going forward, obviously, some of the tools that are getting embedded into the into into even the uh, known brands of uh, you know cameras, uh, known image uh, uh, distribution online distribution companies are going to be such that you are anyway going to get exposed because there's so much of more exceed data that's going to get metadata that's going to get embedded into each of these images more and more sanctioned by uh, uh, camera producers as well as the the image companies uh, that are out there to make a mark, uh, you know, a sale out of images. Uh, so don't get overly excited. That message is to the students who are attending this session today. Uh, so we'll have another session on uh, dedicated to AI down the line with uh, possibly more things to discuss on AI because I, I'm sure, you know, ago it was one, uh, it was, I believe there were only a few, few million on the, on the web, but today I think we're talking of billions, uh, if not uh, trillions very soon, uh, that are going to be machine learning uh, each and every different uh, possibility that you might want to throw at and then create a unique image that is uh, based on your style. So that's another, uh, that we'll leave for another day. Uh, thank you so much for uh, in this uh, session. Thank you so much. Uh, Shantaya, closing remarks from you. Yeah, actually, uh, finally, I will thank everyone, and uh, especially Eman and uh, uh, 
uh, JR and everyone who uh, contributed uh, this uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, it is a successful one. I think uh, everyone uh, got a lot of uh, knowledge and uh, uh, new uh, ideas. I think uh, we we'll look forward to uh, another uh, presentation like this in the future. I think the next, next month. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Just to add to that, uh, Shandaya, next month, 27th, block the date. Yeah. Already, I'm telling you, 27th of May, block the date. Block the date. We'll come back to the speaker. <laughs> thank you, and have, have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.